does this process get more simplistic depending upon the industry? Oh yeah. So great question actually. The the things I'm concentrating on here tend to be um, longer term and more complicated sales. They tend not to be something that any one individual is probably going to to make that decision on their own. And let's face it, in, in a lot of cases, it, that's the businesses are, are being run more and more in terms of collaborative effort and decision making all the time. And so it's important to understand who you're talking to in the organization, what their real role is, not what they tell you it is, but what their real role is. And even in a, a simpler approach, it's not a bad idea to demonstrate to that prospect that you have been paying attention, you've asked the questions that need to get asked, you've documented what it is that's going to happen next, and whenever I've gotten pushback on this, the response is really simple. Look, I get it. Things can change between now and the next time we have that conversation. That's okay. We'll just adjust. But you and I should be in agreement at least on what, what we're going to do for the next 90 days as you evaluate our solution against your decision or you consider my proposal for uh, how to get my uh, fruits and vegetables and hemp products into your stores. Right? Yes, sir. Um, I love this because I'm a systems analysis uh, process. The one thing though I found, and I work for a lot of small business, is, and, and I might, I, I've read the text, but is there a risk that you spend a lot of time and you're trying to educate the person and all that, and you go through this process, and you do a lot of time, and and basically you waste the time. Because it seems like the biggest thing is spending a lot of time trying to rule somebody who you couldn't qualify or look for signs early on that they were never going to really buy. That's a, that's a really great enough. question. Yes, and the answer to that question, quickly, is yes, there's risk. There's risk involved. You may spend your time documenting the sales project for someone who actually isn't a qualified prospect. There's no question that exists. Here's what I would say to that. Once you've gotten this kind of a mindset in place and this kind of a process going, a lot of this doesn't really change too much from one prospect to the next. You know, unless you're selling a really different sort of service or product in different places, you've got a core set of goods and services that you offer to a particular kind of a marketplace. Uh, some of this ends up just becoming getting the right names in the right places. And when somebody says to you, well, I don't know why we need to document this out, the answer is, it's just so that we both have a good understanding about how you're going to make this decision, who's going to be involved in, and what we should be pinning to the calendar for the next couple of weeks. So that I don't become a nuisance to you, and I don't fill up your inbox, and I don't fill up your voicemail box, and you know I'm going to call you on whatever day and time I said over. It sounds like if you get them engaged here, then it sounds like it's less like this. It almost sounds like this helps qualify them. Oh, no it question. seems like, why would they put this effort <laughs> in if they didn't think they could actually do Absolutely. If somebody resists this idea, says it's not worth doing, don't bother sending this to me, I'm going to let you decide what you do with that, that person from there. Doug? It's also not necessarily a metric of tracking a good or bad salesperson, whether they go through the checklist, but it's like, what sales do you actually close? <laughs> So this would be, to me, and the way I've used this in the past, is that this is one of those indicators for um, a review of that funnel in terms of are you really at 50%? Do you have much agreement yet in place? So it is a, it's an indicator in that respect. I don't have a problem with a sales rep who doesn't send this to one of their prospects if they think it's not a good qualified prospect. Don't waste your time with somebody that isn't a great prospect. I look at the, from a sales perspective, here's how I look at the world. Everyone's a suspect, not everyone's a prospect. And some of that, some of that differentiation occurs, hopefully, early in the process where you're deciding and defining what your product market fit is and what your market segmentation looks like within that target market. If your market is healthcare, not everyone's an equal prospect, right? There are characteristics and indications of someone who's most likely to be a buyer and most likely then to agree to something like this. But if you think you've identified an A prospect 
and they're pushing back on this, there's a, a fairly decent chance you're actually just talking to a bad sponsor. Right? The, the company themselves might still be a good prospect. You just haven't found the right person in the organization to talk to yet. 